But like, come on, they had the chance to do the funniest thing! What's up? Miles here. In case you missed it, OpenAI just announced their brand new flagship model, ChatGPT 4.0. It's twice faster and more capable than GPT-4, and the best news, you can use it for free. Previously, GPT-4 required a $20 monthly subscription. Now, with the completely free 4.0, you get almost all the benefits of GPT-4 for free. But before we begin, what does the O even mean? On the OpenAI's website, we can read that the O stands for Omni, because it accepts as input any combination of text, audio, image, and video, and generates any combination of text, audio, and image outputs. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. You might have noticed that the response times are now incredibly fast, averaging 320 milliseconds, which according to OpenAI is close to the average human response rate in a regular conversation. It's because they managed to make this model 50% cheaper in the API which basically means it's using less tokens when replying to your prompts. Their website even disclaims that all the videos are played at normal speed because you know how long you would have to wait sometimes for it to process all the data. It looks like it was very much improved. Nice. You can also interrupt the AI while it's responding by simply speaking to it. Fight was a curious robot. I Always like exploring. started this story, but I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. I think it's useful, especially that it can sometimes go on a long rant about something when you only wanted to know if it's okay for your cat to eat asparagus. Apparently it is. <laughs> so let's talk about the most important features of this new generation of ChatGPT. Vision. You can upload and chat about images. There's also Browse, which scars the internet for real-time data. There's also Memory, which lets the model remember some facts about you and use them to give you more personal answers. Until now, each time you started a new conversation, you would basically have to teach the model again and again who you are and what kind of responses you expect. Now it will remember you and be better at predicting what's the context of your stupid question. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? And one last thing, advanced data analysis, which should enable this model to understand some files that you upload, like. Excel spreadsheets. All these features will be available in 4.0 within the next couple of weeks. Now, the presentation's most impressive part was the demo. They asked it various questions like math equations or bedtime stories. My friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Overall, the intelligence level and answers seem to be similar to the GPT-4, which is likely why they didn't name it GPT-5. But surprisingly, some of the biggest updates are in the voice feature. Here's an example. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, thanks for asking. How about you? Another thing that you might notice is the emotion in the voice. And in fact, what if I were to say that you're related to the announcement, or that you are the announcement? Me? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Well, color me intrigued. Are you about to reveal something about AI? Have you noticed that laugh? Me? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Seems like we're much closer to making Blade Runner or her a reality we live in. Hello, I'm here. Oh. Sometimes I wondered if it's just programmed like this solely for the purpose of this presentation, or maybe it's reacting to how they are smiling at her when they are asking her questions. I realized that I just assumed ChatGPT's gender. What a crazy reality. Hope she doesn't turn on me for that. Thankfully, the voice can change its tone. In a demo, they requested a more dramatic bedtime story reading. Yeah, I really want maximal emotion, like maximal expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours. And even a robotic voice. Initiating dramatic robotic voice. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours. And also, they gave ChatGPT the skills to sing. Let's hear it. And so I'd found another robot friend, and they live circuitly ever after. Her voice did sound kinda shaky. 
Not sure if she was trying to apply vibrato, or maybe she just got nervous. Can robots get nervous? Another new feature related to vision lets you point your camera at something and ask questions about it in real time. It's like giving AI eyes. The first step is to get all the terms with X on one side and the constants on the other side. So what do you think we should do with that plus one? If you're a math tutor, I would start worrying if I were you. Actually, whatever your job is, we're fucked. Now, I feel like our education system is going to change dramatically in the next couple of years. Because when those large language models can understand context from what they see, what they hear, and even understand some emotions, real-time access to knowledge about anything is easier than ever. So, let's be honest, it's impressive. If only you could always have a device on you with ChatGPT built in that would see what you see and always be ready to help you, that would be incredible. What? We already have that device? And it sucks? Huh. And finally, they announced a brand new desktop app that allows for all the previous features, text input, speech input, image upload, along with screen sharing. You can now ask questions about what's on your screen, making it a great productivity tool. But like, Come on, they had the chance to do the funniest thing. It's basically Clippy 2.0. They're even partnered with Microsoft. Uh, wasted opportunity. The demo showcased how it could analyze a graph, but it could also be helpful for doing research or even bouncing ideas of an AI assistant. Even Sam Altman himself said in an interview with Logan Bartlett that he is using it like an assistant during work like someone who's always there to bounce his ideas off of. One surprising one is putting my phone on the table while I'm like really in the zone of working. And then without having to like change windows or change what I'm doing, using it as like another channel. So I'm like working on something, I would normally like stop what I'm doing, switch to another tab, Google something, click around or whatever. But while I'm like still doing it, to just ask and get like an instant response, without changing from what I was looking at on my computer, that's been a surprisingly cool thing. Overall, these are impressive updates from OpenAI, and I am curious to try them out. And I have this one question to you. Are you using AI already? Or do you prefer doing things the old way? Let's continue this conversation about AI in the comments. And for now, thank you for watching. I am Miles, you're now miles ahead, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.